You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Now, the last time I saw you, Jonathan, we were having lunch at the Lux Hotel, and you were patiently at, uh, answering every one of my daughter's questions about the movie Clue. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, I, I, I learned... And I, a, I don't remember what I said, and it may none of it have been correct. I think you were talking about uh, how you wished it had an R rating and it could have been more brutal to connect <laughs> with today's kids. No, no, actually, I learned a lot about you that day because here she was nine at the time asking you questions about a movie she loved, and you were just very patient and saying, well, did the butler do it? We don't know. Which ending did you see, love? You know, yes. <laughs> you know? And we had talked about how the multiple ending. Yeah, I thought that right. was... It showed you what a class act you were, but you're here for some official business. I'm here for official business, yes, because we we live in New York now, so. Um, and that's a bummer for us. So, um, but I'm here because I'm directing a play that I've co-written, which is on at the Geffen Theatre in a month from now. Yes, yes. And which was been on in London for three years and was a big hit there. And the play is it's called Yes, Prime Minister. Yes, Prime Minister. It's I think a, we've all heard of this. It's a it's a satirical comedy. Well, that's, maybe that's not the way to describe it, really. So, yes, Prime Minister, is this something you also wrote, or how did you get in business with this product? Uh, well, it's a, it was a television show originally. I wrote it 30 year, 33 years ago with my writing partner, Tony J. We came up with this idea about writing a, a TV show that actually showed how the British government worked. And um, how does it work, Jonathan? Clue uh, us in. Well, of course, it doesn't. That's, right. really, that's why it's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> as, as Will Rogers famously said, if you've got the whole government working for you, there's no trick to being a humorist. True. Uh, and um, so, anyway, we wrote this this series. It was a it was a colossal success in its day, and yeah. it's a bit like sort of Cheers or Frasier or something. Here, it just goes on being shown forever in Britain, which is very fortunate for us. And um, and people have been saying to us for 30 years on and off can't you write a play based on these characters? And we'd always said no. And then we thought, well, why not, actually? Why not, indeed? So we did, and we didn't know how it would go. You know, it's uh, it was a new cast, and people associated it with the actors they'd seen on television. But it was, uh, from the moment it opened, it was a complete sellout. Um, it was completely sold out. It was an enormous hit. And um, it was terrific fun. So we're doing it here now. It's, it's the U.S. premiere is going to be at the Geffen Theatre, starting previews on June the 4th. I hope we can uh, come down and see that. Oh, I hope uh, you will. I would very much like to be it's a part uh, of it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's about um, the way the government doesn't work. And if, although you know, it's about the British government, uh, governments don't work the same way all over the world. Right. That, they're all based on the principle that if no one knows what you're doing, no one knows what you're doing wrong. That is a uh, that is a principle true in many governments. You're correct. I got a just an offbeat question. You referenced both Cheers and Frasier, a show about alcoholics and psychology and nutcases. Yeah. Is there any reason you reference those two shows when talking about a play about the British government? Uh, I hadn't realized no implications that, but, there. But but uh, well, since you mentioned it, there probably is. That was <laughs> it was a subconscious or an unconscious connection. What? But it is certainly true that in in our play, the prime minister does drink too much uh, with some catastrophic results. Who is the Prime Minister this time around? Uh, he's called Jim Hacker. Jim Hacker? Yeah. Who's the actor you've got? You've cast as in the role? Michael McKean. Oh, perfect choice. Who's great. And who I worked with a long time ago when we made Clue. Yes. He was Mr. Green. Yes, he was. Or he was the FBI agent alias Mr. Green, depending on That's right. which ending you saw. That's right. And then he was in Spinal Tap, of course. He well, was brilliant. Great in Spinal Tap. Brilliant. And he's in all of Christopher Guest's movies, I think. He's a really wonderful actor. He's playing the Prime Minister. He's great. You could go on and on, as my kid often does, about the cast of Clue and how brilliant you did putting that together. But I want to ask you about the play real quick. Yeah. It, yeah. And it starts, previews start June 4th, you said, at the Geffen. Yes. What is the difference, in your mind, being such a skilled film director and now going to the stage? Well, Was I that challenging? Just, no, because I'm not going to the stage. I started on the stage. I directed at the National Theatre and the Royal Shakespeare really? Company and, and a number of West End productions. West, the West End is our equivalent of Broadway, before I ever uh, directed a movie. So for me, it was the other way around. I had to learn how to 
direct a film, having directed on the stage for many years. And in fact, when I made Clue, I didn't have the faintest idea what I was doing. I, I was really you, trying to find you, out you what I You fake it pretty good. I, I was learning as I went along. I, you know, I had a wonderful director of photography who, you know, who helped. And, and you know, a lot of people around telling me how to do things. And I, I did a lot of homework, of course. And I'd right. seen movies of my life, but yeah. but I'd never done it before. Were, so, so was that a diff was that a difficult transition? Tremendously yeah. difficult, especially since it was a, a farcical comedy. And you know, on stage that means that you see everybody at the same time, so you can I was have a lot say. of simultaneous action, which is what happens in the play, which is also a farcical comedy. Um, uh, but in, in in film, because uh, everything happens in a much tighter shot. Uh, you can't you, you can't get a laugh from two things happening at once, right? Uh, unless they're in the same shot, and they hardly ever are, uh, unless it's a very wide shot. If it's a very wide shot, the audience doesn't really see it. Yeah, you instead know. of simultaneous reaction, it's okay now. That's turn right. The camera so it's, here and it's a completely different technique. In, in film, you focus the audience's attention where you want it by moving the camera in closer. Uh, and if you want them to focus on a particularly important or, for instance, moving moment. You go to a big close-up so you can see tears in somebody's eyes or something like that. Um, on stage, you can't focus the action by moving the camera because there isn't a camera. So you have to do it with the way you block out the action on the stage uh, in interesting diagonal patterns, and you do it with lighting cues. You do it with all kinds of other tricks that the audience doesn't see or, uh, yeah, I really think they don't see. Um, so that because the trick in directing on stage is to make sure the audience are all looking in the right place at the right moment. Right. Whereas in a, in a film, that's the one thing you can be sure of. That's the plus of the film. At least you know everyone's looking at the same thing. Right. Because that's all you're showing them. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So it's a completely it's a completely different technique. It makes a huge difference in comedy. Has anyone ever approached you about turning some of the films you've directed into uh, plays, such as Clue? I can't believe that's not on Broadway um, somewhere. Well, you know, although I wrote it and directed it, I don't own the rights. I think either Paramount owns the rights or Parker Brothers or whoever owns Parker Brothers now. I don't know. Do we really um, need a gaming company it would owning be the a, rights? It, I, a... What I think Clue would be is a great musical. Probably. Because it's only 80 minutes long. So, or 85, but I think it includes all the credits and everything. So it's probably just over 80 minutes long. So you add an hour of songs, you've still only got a two and a half hour show. You don't have to lose anything from the script. You just add a bunch of funny songs. I'd love to do that. Uh, Clue is a musical? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've got some lyrics coming to mind right now that are perfect <laughs> for it. But we'll jump to that at another date because I don't want to turn the audience off to the important things you're saying. You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer right here on LA Talk Radio. 